Hi, in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to set up a generator to be connected to your UPSs. Now, for those of you who are not familiar, the difference between a generator and a UPS is that a generator usually works on some sort of fuel, diesel or petrol, and it's usually more um, rough. And I use the word rough because if you look here, it might say 3000 watts and all these things and the frequency, but when you measure it, you'll see that unless it's a high-end, top-of-the-range generator with some sort of uh, uh, second stage inverting uh, most generators give you quite a dirty signal and what I mean by dirty I mean that the signal coming out of here from the generator can you know can damage sensitive electronics for the reason that it's not exactly what it says if it says 50 Hertz or if it says 60 Hertz a pure sine wave it won't give you a pure sine wave and electronics need a pure sine wave at exactly the frequency that they're designed for especially sensitive electronics so what people do is they buy UPSs now UPSs can deal with a dirty power now here we got a generator it's just an example of a generator I'm not saying that this brand is bad or anything I'm just saying that here I've got a generator and for most uh, people a generator is fine for a kettle and things like that but the minute you're going to start using it on your electronics and cameras and TVs and things like that you might want to put it through a UPS so what the UPS does is it almost cleans the power it conditions it now you do get offline UPSs and online UPSs now the more expensive ones are called online it means that you plug it into the electricity and the UPS through a series of uh, transistors push-pull transistors called an H bridge actually remakes the power it converts it to DC and then to AC again and by doing that you can control the signal so it can give you exactly what you set it to if you want 220 volts at exactly 60 Hertz the UPS will do it at a very high accuracy and therefore we call it clean power so it's best practice if you're going to use a generator is to put it through a UPS so a lot of people don't know how to do that so in this video I'm just going to demonstrate how to go about putting the generator through the to the UPS and another benefit of this is a UPS usually has at least 45 minutes of battery so what happens is if your power goes out you won't lose your documents and maybe you're working on a on, a, on a, some software on your computer or you're watching a movie or you're streaming or downloading whatever your electricity will go off your UPS will kick in or it will already be on but it'll then go into battery mode and then it'll only give you about 45 minutes depending on the size of the load or the UPS you can see there's a much bigger UPS so it really does depend and what happens is you can then go and switch on your generator Okay, right, so let's just uh, talk about the principle of operation here. The generator, when you start it, has power on these two uh, outlets here. So there we go. And in principle, this would be on. Uh, in real life, this would be on. And there, let's just say this is your load. There's a cell phone charger. Okay, so we said we don't want to go directly to the generator. We want to be using the UPS. So that means, so that means coming out of the, UP, uh, the generator will be a cable. There you go, a supply cable. And this now has to feed your UPS. So at the back of your UPS, you'll have to plug this. So this is the first method. I am going to show you another method, a better method, where we use something called a changeover switch. But I just want to first show you the very elementary method. So you, what you would end up doing is, ah, let's turn this around. At the back of your UPS, your UPS would have been plugged into the supply. So here's your uh, supply cable. There we go. And this would have been plugged into your electricity. Now, the problem is, is the electricity went offline. So what you would need to do is then plug your UPS into your generator, like that. So there we go. We've plugged the, U the generator into the UPS. Then you can now charge your UPS instead of discharging it while there's no electricity. And then your load is now sitting here at the back of your UPS. So there we go. There's the crude way of doing it. So now you have the generator feeding the UPS. When the electricity comes back on, well, you'll unplug the generator, the, the, the UPS mains cable from the 
uh, generator and you put it back into your wall socket there somewhere your outlet in your wall so that's quite a crude way of doing it because you know unplugging plugging it's much nicer if you could install what we call a generator changeover switch and what happens here is you can see that when the electricity is on this little light here will be will will light up and then you know it's on mains okay and when the electricity goes off all you have to do is start up your generator your generator is automatically uh, plugged into your UPS and you will change over to the generator the generator will then feed the UPS when the electricity comes back on well you'll change back over and then you'll go back to your mains switch off your generator so this is the better way of doing it so I'm going to now demonstrate how to set up a generator or what we call a changeover switch okay here is the generator changeover switch so I'm just going to open it up and as you can see this has to be mounted on a wall or on a surface so I'm now going to drill this into the wall And the right if you're not sure about the principle of operation of the change of a switch please watch my video explaining the principle of operation and how this all works but what you need is three wires coming in or well two coming in and one going out so basically you're going to need three connectors now this is a very generic uh, uh, housing there's no uh, pre-drilled holes here it's this is quite uh, elementary I'm not even that impressed with this there should be holes here so what I'm gonna now need to do is drill three holes for these three um, little uh, fittings here because we need one wire coming in for the supply the mains we need one wire coming in for the generator as the mains if the, okay we need one wire coming in for the mains we need one wire coming in as the generator and then we need one wire going out for the load so we need three uh, connections to this little box so i'm now going to make three little connections for this uh, uh, changeover switch Right, as you can see, I drilled three holes here and I've put these fittings here so that the wire can come in without insects and, and so forth coming in. You can see that you can tighten it. It's got a, 
uh, little rubber there on the inside and what happens is this is how the switch is going to look like and you can see that the generator is the red so I'm going to put the generator that side you can see the blue is the main so that's why the mains are there and on the left hand side here this I'm going to use as my load so the, the important thing that you need to understand is that the changeover switch is changing over from the generator supply a, a generator as the supply or the mains as the supply and whichever one you choose is what's going to feed the load all right so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to wire this thing up okay now it's time to wire this up this is two millimeter flat plus earth you could use cab tire cab tire looks like this this is the cab tire and then it's obviously got the strands whereas this is solid um, and obviously this is flat. It's more difficult to work with this in terms of this type of uh, insulation, whereas this will be easier. But this is not high current carrying. This is only 16 amp. And the minimum you want to use, the minimum is 20 amp cable. So this is 21 amps. This is 2 millimeter. But keep in mind that it really depends on uh, what you're driving here. You see, this is a 63 amp uh, changeover switch, which is more than enough for most houses. Now... Um, if you wanted to, you could have this switch before your CODB board and actually switch your entire house to mains or generator. But I'm not doing that now. I'm just doing a uh, portion of the house whereby uh, I'll have some of the the uh, plugs or some of the devices coming from uh, come fed from the generator or the uh, UPS. So I'm going to just use the two point, uh, the two millimeter. Although, as I said, I do recommend you use the biggest cable you can, and uh, this is will give me at least four kilowatts because this can carry twenty one amps. That's if it's on a surface. Remember, cable in the air or on a surface surface has a different characteristic. So when it's mounted to a surface, it can give you twenty one amps, which is four kilowatts, which is more than enough for what I'm uh, doing over here. So, what you're going to do is you're going to feed that in there. Now, very important, when you're working with uh, solid cable, you mustn't uh, uh, use side cut as well, unless you're very skilled, because you don't want to scrap or, or cut into the solid uh, core here, because then when you move it like that, it just breaks off. So this is why you should use wire strippers. All right, so this is going to be my mains, and now this has got to be wired to the plug. It could be either wired directly into the plug or onto the plug, but the only problem is, is that um, the plug tops, the plug tops generally are only 16 amps, so you might want to wire it directly into the plug. But anyway, that is your choice. Now, in my case, I'm going to wire this into the plug because it is this is 20 amp cable and in the plug there is already 20 amp cable. So I don't have to put a plug top on, as you can see. And this is not, you don't usually use this cable with these plug tops. And obviously it does depend on your, on your country. This is a South African plug. It's not common elsewhere. So you could wire this part directly to your main. So I've got a, a main set. Uh, outlets just along the wall here and I'm going to wire it into the mains outlet right so that will be the mains now we need a cable for the generator now this really depends where your generator is going to be positioned because you might find you don't have your generator in the same area because of the fumes 
so your generator probably will be outside so you might have to do a cable run. Right, so you've got your generator, your mains, and now you still need your load. Now, in this case, the load is a UPS. So it's going to be quite close to this, so I'm just going to wire it directly to the UPS. Right, so a lot of people get confused with these changeover switches. Now, what it does is as follows. As you can see, there's a... Uh, a numerous spaces here where you can connect things now what happens is in principle this is what is what is going on this in my setup is my load so this is the load and are you going to be powering your load let's call it a kettle from your generator or from your mains now the reason for the changeover switch is because the mains the electricity goes off so this would be your mains and that would be under normal circumstances can you see how they would be connected the red and the red and the black and the black would be connected together now the electricity goes off maybe there was load shedding maybe there was a fault on one of the power lines right boom now you change over to your generator. So that means you're disconnecting that and you are now connecting that live and this neutral together. That, that means that you are completely isolated from the uh, utility or your power company. And then when the electricity comes back on, you can change back over, which means that's going to be there and the neutral is going to be uh, don't worry about the earth, the neutral is going to be there. So that the, even if the generator is on, it will have nothing to do with your load anymore. So that is the principle of operation of a generator change over switch. Okay, so how do you wire this thing? Now, a lot of the time, these things come with very cryptic instructions. The one that I'm using here is called a Gave or a Gavi. I'm not sure how you pronounce it. Um, if you're interested in seeing the details of the wiring, please watch my video explaining how to uh, wire up a single phase uh, change of a switch. This is just the pinouts for your reference. You might find that two of these contactors are actually shorted out. Look, let me show you. Right, I am... I'm measuring continuity, there we go. And as you can see, these are shorted out. Look at that, those two pins are shorted out and irrespective whether it's on generator or mains, it's still shorted out. And that's where people get confused. What you need to know is you see these little display lights, they are giving you a hint. This display light is telling me, okay, mains, you see it's on the main side. So this display light is telling me that my live and my neutral must be connected here. So they will share these two pins. Then on the generator side, my live and my neutral must be on this side sharing these two pins. Then on this side here, what is happening is as it changes over the switch, this and that become uh, uh, contacted and that and that where is it and this one become contacted so what happens is it's actually allowing me to get my supply from these two contacts then when I change over to the other side generator it's a lot it's then going to get my supply from these two contacts so it's very important that you uh, wire this thing correctly so I will just uh, wire it now and there we go so this is the generator side. So what you can do is you can put the earth away. We're going to connect all the earths together shortly. And if you need to, just extend that. Right, so you can see that I'm sharing this uh, point here with the little illumination connector. There we go. So there's neutral and the neutral of the illumination connector. And now I'm going to tighten that and very tight.
and that is why I'm using a like a posi drive screwdriver. That means it's almost got like, like a flat tip there. All right, so now I'm going to do the live and the the live of the generator and the live of the illumination for the generator light. Whoops, there. And again, don't be shy to tighten this. Very tight. So there we go. You see, that's the generator illumination. There we go. And that's kind of how I worked it out. Although I did check the instructions and this is correct. Right, now we need to get to the uh, mains. So this is your mains. Now in my little circuit here, a little design, this is my mains. And I'm going to first do the neutral because it's there at the back. Okay, and I'm going to slot the neutral in there with that shared, yeah, there we go, with the shared component, uh, with the shared wire there, from the illumination neutral of the mains. Sorry. Okay, and now the live for the mains shared with the live for the illumination. Now, some of these changeover switches don't have illumination, so then you will have to just check the pinouts because you won't have the little trick of the, uh, uh, LED, the, the illumination to guide you. Okay, now we just do a last check. Right. Now the load. This is the load side. You might be wondering why the uh, there are two open con uh, contacts here for the load. Well, maybe you've got a big load. So maybe some wires are going there, some wires are going there. But basically, these are the same. If you measure the continuity, continuity just means it's checking if there's a short. There we go. We hear the little siren there, the little buzzer. And as I showed you earlier, it doesn't matter which of these I use. It really doesn't matter. They are both contacted. So I can choose that side or that side. But what is important is whether you're setting live or neutral. Now, I can see that the live is on this row. You can see that. Now, if I look at the instructions, just to check, it says mains. There it says uh, five and one goes to to two or four and five goes to six or eight there we go one goes to two or four and there's four and five goes to six or eight can you see there's rows here so that's the neutral row and that's the live row so now that's what I'm trying to highlight here is don't just put these any old way else you'll get your polarities wrong so there we go. I'm going to stick them both in at the same time here. Uh, but in my side, I'm going to work on the those two. It's easier to screw them in. There we go. All right, so there is the changeover switch now wired up. And you might be wondering, what do you do with all these earths? And in most insulation, you want to keep the earths all together. So this is why I am now going to wrap these earths, uh, intertwine them, as you can see, because there's one earth per installation. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tape them up because when I close this, I don't want the earth touching any of these conductors. So I'm just going to... Okay, so let's check. We've got the... Um, this will be the generator. Let's check. Yes, it's going there. And that is the red side generator. Then we've got the mains. That's going that side. There's the mains light. And then there is the uh, load. Right, I'm going to demonstrate it and check it. 
twice. This is the first check. Now, what I'm showing you here, this is the other side of the load cable. There you can see the load. Now, look, I'm going to first check whether the live and neutral are touching. They shouldn't be. That's correct. Now, I'm holding my finger on the live, and I want to see if... It, if I connect it to the generator, whether the, um, the buzzer will go, telling me that I'll be getting my supply from the generator side. So there's the generator, and I'm going to put, there we go. Now I'm going to put it on the main side and see if I get a, a, a buzzer. I shouldn't. See, I'm not. Now I'm going to flick this over, and now I should be getting a buzzer here on the main side. You're correct, but on the uh, generator side, I should get nothing. See, and there we go, dead quiet. So that is telling me that it is now wired correctly. I will test it one more time, a little bit later, just to show you another way of testing it. Right, now this thing can now be closed. So what you're gonna do is you just wanna fold these wires nicely in there so that you can seat this on. And when you close it, just look to the side just to make sure that none of those, especially those illuminating wires, the illumination wires, are not getting caught because this is IP rated and it's obviously got quite a, um, it's got like a lip and you don't want the wire to get stuck in the middle because it will get cut by the plastic uh, lip on the side here. Right, so we just seal this now, we just close it. There we go. All right, so there's the generator changeover switch. And now I'm just gonna clean up these cables. Now, as I said, this is my mains cable. That's why it's much shorter. I've chosen mains on this side with the blue light, so this would be the mains. And I'm gonna wire this directly to my mains. So I'm going to just be going here, and I'm going to just use some, uh, what do you call these, um, saddles. It's a saddle. I'm just going to hammer them into the wall. Now, in my case, I'm wiring it directly into the plug. Now you have to make sure the electricity is off because now you are actually working live. Now there is the, uh, as I said, the 21 amp cables and that's why I need to wire them directly into the plug here. So what I'm going to do is I see there is the, um, the supply. So we're going to share this point here. So I'm going to open this one. And I'm going to install my live in there as well so they're going to share it there we go and again make it very tight and while you're here it's not a bad idea to just check that the other uh, yeah I see that one wasn't tight just make sure that the rest are all tight as well and there's the earth which as I said you can see that the person before also covered it because they didn't want it to touch any uh, other terminals here now you can see the neutral is wired straight into the plug there so I'm going to catch the neutral open it here in the plug fitting and just share it so I'm going to pull this one out first just to make sure yes and open this a bit more now, every country is different in terms of how they uh, wire their plugs, in terms of the layout, but the rules in terms of live, neutral, and things like that, that doesn't change. And often you find when you're doing these plugs, you can see how, uh, just by pulling it out, you can see that it was already um, about to break. So that is why I'm going to remake this or re-strip this. There we go. And if you want to, you could even twist these around so that when we go with the screw and tighten it it does not uh, bed only into one of the cables obviously destroying that cable there we go oh, much much better right Okay, now we can screw it in. <sighs> and 
and again very tight okay so the last thing is just the earth so the earth as I said before is a shared wire so what you're gonna do now is you're gonna see how that's gonna be it's gonna be like that so the earth I'm just gonna wind to the back and now really strap it like wind it round here and yes I know I sound like Arnold Schwarzenegger you go round here <clears throat> yeah all the way so you wind that right round there and there we go live live before the switch so this is always on so if someone comes and switches it on or off it's not going to affect our changeover neutral is wired in there the earth is out of the way and time to put this back you might want to at this point uh, put in another saddle Okay, so there we go. The mains is now uh, installed and this one is going to the load and in this case the load is the UPS. So what I'm going to do now is I'm now going to install this onto the UPS. Right, here are two UPSs. Now, earlier I showed you that this was the UPS I was going to use. So this would be the supply cable. So I would have to now effectively run this uh, from the, it was from the changeover switch. This is the load cable and this has to be connected better. So either I could join these wires like this, I could wire it directly into the UPS or I could use uh, a UPS like this, which is what I'm going to be doing now. This UPS, um, over here, one has a terminal block on the side here, and that's one of the reasons why I am uh, setting it up like this. I'm now going to set this UPS up like as, as follows. Uh, this is the input, so here we go. Okay. And now for the live. Now, if you're wondering how I know which is live and neutral, it does say so on the faceplate here. Uh, there's a little L and N. The live is the red, and then the earth, which is a shared earth, is going to be here in the middle. And just by the way, you'll see that the chassis and earth are touching each other. So you could earth uh, anywhere on the chassis. So that's why it's standing out a little bit, and I don't mind because when I put the load here, I'm going to uh, wrap the earths together. Right, so that's the supply, but what I don't like, as you can see, is how it's all loose here. Um, it does come with a little cover, but nothing to support this wire. So what I recommend is just take a cable tie, and what I'm going to do is just wrap it onto this uh, little... Um, And that's the UPS connected to the changeover now. Right, so now I can turn this. Okay, so this is the final solution. You can see the mains is on. Um, there's the generator. Generator's off. It's in the central position, which means that the load, this is the load, is off. While here, this is the mains is on and the generator, which is this wire for this whole uh, generator here. Um, I put it on the floor here and obviously there's a, a long uh, cable because it's going to be outside. So I've just got it here just for the video. And when I start the generator, you should see this light going on, which I will do.
Okay, so I'm going to switch the UPS on um, here. UPS is on and it should show that there's no electricity. Uh, there it is. The battery light has come on. It's beeping, telling me there's no electricity. So when I change over, so when I change over here to mains, that beeping should go away, and the UPS should then go on to mains. Let's see. Yes, there it is. It's showing the line voltage. So it's correct. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch off the mains. I'm going to I'm going to switch off the mains. And then I'm going to start the generator. And what I want you to have a look at is the following if you see the UPS screen here it's showing battery when I put the generator on it should then go back to line because the UPS does not know whether it's a generator or uh, um, uh, your utility but what it will know is there's uh, voltage sitting on its supply so once I start the generator the battery should go off and should go back onto line let's test Right, so I'm going to change it onto the generator and the UPS should then be powered by the generator. So in summary, we have a UPS. From the output of your UPS, you could connect all your electronics or whatever. But the UPS needs to get power from somewhere. So the UPS is now connected here. There's the output. The UPS acts as the load. There it is. Uh, there's the output. And at the moment, the UPS is getting its power from the mains. There's the mains wire going to the electricity. When the electricity of your utility is offline or there's some problem, you'll then have to start up your generator. There's your generator. But the generator is also connected. There we go. to your changeover switch. So when you start your generator, this red light will come on and most probably this blue light will be off because your electricity for your house or your business will be offline. And then what you'll be doing is you'll be changing over, getting your um, power from your generator and no longer from your supply. All the while, your devices probably will still be online because your UPS has some battery backup. So your UPS is feeding maybe your computers or whatever it is. And if it's a big UPS like this, uh, when I say big, I mean big for a house or a very small office, then this UPS can go up to 4 kilowatts. So you could wire this UPS directly into your DB board, which I have actually done, and that's a separate video. And what happens is some critical lights and plugs are then coming from fed from this UPS, but the UPS only has an hour or two at the most, 40 minutes depending on the load, an hour or two at the most. So what you'll need to do is then you change over to your generator. And that's what I've showed you today. So instead of running around with extension cords and plugging in and out and whatnot, you simply do the changeover over here using that manual changeover switch. You can get automatic changeovers, but then you'll need an auto generator to start. The generator will then need to be told to start, so there'll be some sort of measuring device on the mains. When the mains goes offline, the generator kicks in and it automatically changes over once the voltage has re reached operating conditions. Right, so I hope this was informative. Please watch my other videos if you are battling with how to connect things up. Um, I do have other videos on how to set up the generator, how to connect the UPS, and so forth. Thanks for watching. Cheers.